How's up, y'all? It's Poppin' with Cracking D. Blocks your to this vid by Luessa's title, Why Hip Hop Doesn't Respect Cardi B. Oop. Okay, well, we're gonna hear what he has to say about why people don't respect her. Let's watch. At one point, Cardi B seemed like she was about to become the new queen of hip hop. With just one album to her name, yeah, she had um, already accomplished things that seasoned vets like Nicki Minaj never had, oh. including a Grammy Award and a solo number one single. But from the outset of her career, there was one ingredient missing, and that Tyler? was the support of the genre oh. that made her famous. I can't be shady. Because for a whole variety of reasons. Because I like Cardi B. Don't get it twisted, okay? And I'm never trying to hide that or or be shady towards. <laughs> Towards anybody, cause I I fuck with Cardi's music. I listen to her, so yeah. But I I know that's the narrative that she doesn't have any talent. Talent. She wasn't ever seen as a real artist, and now things are worse than ever, leaving her whole career hanging in the balance. It's your boy Luesta, and this is why rap doesn't respect Cardi B. At the moment, it really feels like the Bronx rapper is in a new state of freefall. Much like her on-again, off-again enemy Nicki Minaj, the now 31-year-old rapper hasn't exactly been growing old gracefully. In recent years, her public life has imploded with the demise of her relationship with Offset that even led to assault charges when she caught up with a woman he'd allegedly sleep with. Elsewhere, she's been caught throwing a microphone at an audience member at a show just hours after she had done the same thing to her DJ. Back when she was on the rise, Cardi was billed as a feminist icon, bringing her sex-positive perspective to the industry while proving herself to be a talented entrepreneur at the same time. From defending her decision to launch an OnlyFans through the controversies over her lyrics, Cardi has relied on women to defend her when most men wouldn't. But in recent months, she's openly turned her back on them too, mm. as her online interactions got increasingly erratic. I am not a feminist no more. You wanna know why? Because you could get on social media and your hardest critics is women. That's women so are always out here looking for ways to talk shit about other women. It's like women's worst enemies are women. And y'all like to be talking about that as men. No, it be, it be y'all bitches. After years in the public eye, it seems like the pressure that and scrutinies so of fame have gone to Because her. of your bum ass fans. <laughs> or people who follow you because they don't fuck with you so you're gonna write off all women and say you're no longer a feminist that is just peak stupidity Once that's like me getting criticism from some black people and I'm like you know what fuck y'all niggas <laughs> I, I'm, I'm no longer pro black I no longer fuck with black people because these black people are, are bullying me online oh this is my villain era because when I be nice, y'all still talk shit. There's a lot of celebrities that be nice as fuck. And y'all still be talking shit about them. So it's like, you know what? Fuck y'all. Y'all already made up an image of, of me that I'm a super evil, whatever the fuck. She's too worried bitch, about what everybody talking about. Yeah, bitch, I'm gonna be that. Because y'all bitches getting me on my fucking nerve. Now looking That's like hurting you more than anybody, baby doll. Or critiques her music, including her fans, Cardi is now in a very tricky spot. But while she's publicly declared that she's entering her villain era, there are plenty of rap fans who've always viewed her as a plague on the culture and at times she's made it easy for them to dunk on her but to understand this we need to go back a little raised in the bronx cardi b certainly has the chaotic come-up story you'd expect from a new york mc for one thing she had made it on her own from a very very early age i ain't deciding i got kicked out of home and everything you know a lot of people think oh it's because like i was like probably bugging in the streets or anything i just really used to fight a lot with my sister older no she's younger than me but you know we both got like a little heated attitude and like we just always used to break my mother crib everything like it's like oh bro. And I was like, I can't take this anymore. You gotta leave. Every time growing up, my mom said, if, if y'all leave this house and if I kick y'all out, don't ever think about coming back again. And it's like, like I said, like I like to prove myself. So as much as I wanted to go back, I just never went back because I always wanted to prove or something. And actually I did went back and I only lasted back like a week. For Cardi, her initial fame necessarily didn't come as a musician. Instead, the former stripper was introduced to the masses as a part of Love & Hip Hop New York, where her wild personality and antics made her into a star. I'm classy, but I could be classy -er. hey, I'm so chill. Just as her first experiences in the show began to air, Cardi launched her music career, and before the season had even concluded, she released her first mixtape entitled Gangsta Bitch like One. This. But in a culture where J. Cole insulted Lil Pump that in five years you gonna be on Love and Hip Hop, launching a rap career from a reality show isn't a great way to be taken seriously. So to begin with, the press were brutal with her. 
what was the what was the famous quote that you was gonna get your teeth taken out of the back or something? Yeah, but uh, after that, like you know, like that was six a long months time before ago. that, yeah. so you know. and you didn't actually get your teeth taken out to suck better dick anyway, so you didn't do it. It didn't yeah. actually happen, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> after spending two seasons on the show, she decided to depart from the platform that initially brought her fame to focus on a rap career. To begin with, she wanted to stress that this wasn't some kind of cash grab either. She wanted to be taken seriously as an artist. I don't want people to think I became a rapper because I was on Love & Hip Hop, she said. There are a couple of songs that are on the mixtape that I did before Love & Hip Hop. It just wasn't completely perfect. It wasn't completely perfect and everything takes time. It took me like a year to complete the mixtape. Everything I do, it takes a lot of time for me to do it because only the best sells, you know? If you want people to take you seriously, you gotta do the best. For example, my eyeshadow line. I've been planning, been talking about it for a year, and it still hasn't been released yet because it's not the way I want it to be. It has to be extremely perfect, only great Did things really sell. Within the space of a couple years, Cardi has gone from the stripper pole to pole position in the race to become the challenger of Nikki's throne. If that seemed like a lot of pressure, then it was about to intensify when she was signed to Atlantic Records off the strength of a free mixtape. Explaining why she decided to link up with the major label, Cardi made one of many, many statements in her career that would make it obvious that when it came down to it, she valued the bag way more than anything else. I had a lot of deals on the table, but like they gave me the best offer, the one that I don't have to owe them much, and they gave me a lot of money, so I took it, Cardi said. They gave the right number, so I chose them. It was significantly more than other deals. I heard a lot of good things and they were really eager to work with me. So I was just like, if they want to give me this money, then it's because they're really going to work hard for me. And in some people's eyes, Cardi was right. And Atlantic worked extra hard to make her career take off. But we'll get to that. First, she had to prove herself in the commercial marketplace. And it's safe to say that happened with the release of Bodak Yellow. The track undeniably became the sound of the summer in 2017, becoming the longest running number one single by a solo woman rapper of all time. It was even such a phenomenon that it even boosted the sales of the Louboutin red bottom shoes she mentioned in the lyrics by over 200%. Since then, it's been played over 1 billion times on this platform I mean, alone. So in an instant, Cardi had gone from a novelty to a real commercial force in hip hop. And even though she knew she would never become people's favorite rapper, that didn't seem to really bother her all that much in the beginning. I want to tell the people out there that thank you for supporting me. And if you don't, suck my dick. And I know you think because I'm a woman, I don't have a dick, but I have a pink dildo in my dresser. Why should people care about Cardi B? Why should people that. care? Not I think you anymore. should care. Well, you don't have to care for me. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't give you no money. I don't help you out. I don't do anything for you. I just make you laugh and entertain you. And if that's good enough for me, then you should care. If I don't entertain you, then you don't. You shouldn't care. You should move on with your life. But from the moment that she became a mainstream star, hip-hop was already given reasons to withhold their respect. For one thing, she was hit with the allegations that she was using ghostwriters. And in case you didn't know by now, that's one of the most serious allegations that can be leveled at a rapper. It all started with Azalea Banks, who, after initially praising Cardi, turned on her when oh, Bodak Yellow began to do a major number and left her on the receiving end of one of those infamous rants. You know the nigga from Harlem who wrote the song, the nigga's name is Cole, he's friends with your boyfriend from jail and you fuck, they all call you a smart and say your ass is purple. I might get the nigga to write for me too. <laughs> Kudos, dunce. Bro, everybody in the hood already said that you fucked for raps. While these claims were never verified, we do know that one man who that worked on Bodak Yellow was Pardon. none other than the infamous wordsmith, Partisan Fontaine. Despite Cardi's him? insistence that he's more of a co-writer than a ghostwriter, people really found that hard to believe when reference tracks for songs like her third single, Be Careful, started surfacing. Man, I thought you would have learned your lesson. Bow, like your pictures not returning texts. I guess it's fine, man. I get the message. You still stutter at this certain questions. You keep in contact with certain exes. Man, I thought you would have learned your lesson. Bow, like your pictures not returning texts. To begin with, Cardi was defiant about it and wanted to let the world know that she had bars as well. But when that explanation didn't work, and people wondered why she should be a judge on Netflix's rhythm and flow when she doesn't even come up with everything herself. Mm. Cardi changed tactics. Instead of trying to clear her own name, like show, she decided though. to try and bring everyone else down with her. Oh, is this the fashion of the show? I went too late. No, I don't think this is the one. And when that 
didn't work either. She, once again, proved that she was all about making as much bank as possible. I like to make money. I don't really give a fuck about being lyrical. I don't give a fuck about this and that. If that shit don't work for me, I don't care. I like to make shit that's gonna make me fucking money. I like to make shit that's gonna climb me up the, on the charts. Like, that's what I want. I want to be up top of the charts. I want to make money. I don't care about none of that shit. Considering how much people love and value hip-hop as an art form, this kind of attitude was never going to get her much support from people outside of, of the party like, game. Yeah. But still, she just kept right on with it. You think I'm mad? LMAO. It's number one on iTunes charts, right? It's number seven on Apple, right? Me and Partisan getting paid while we sleep and achieving shit? How? Why are you mad at me? And why are you mad at your life? Ghostwriting may be one thing, but this wasn't even the only way that Cardi was accused of getting help. Remember back when she said that she signed with Atlantic because they were going to work extra hard to make her a star? Well, Hot 97's DJ Funk Flex was about to lift the lid on exactly what that meant. In a lengthy Instagram post, the radio legend unveiled his feelings on her rise to fame and said that there would be some payola involved. I think Cardi is a great entertainer and has great songs. I gave my opinion when she said she was the king of New York, and when I found out she didn't write her own songs, mm. I met Cardi and her management, and I respected his and Cardi's hustle. But let's be clear, Cardi's team and many other artists in the beginning of their careers pay DJs to play records and say that they are hot. Since I never took a penny from a rapper, I'm not scared to speak on it. I have emails I've gotten from labels over the years with names and figures. Straight away, Cardi tried to discredit Flex's allegations. But when that didn't work, she started trying to play on people's sympathies. And while it may be the first time, it wouldn't be the last that Cardi would try to use her past to get a pass on present day behavior. Today, I'm going to give the haters exactly what they want, okay? So this is gonna come out of my mouth since they want this so bad for me. Hey, everybody. Can you please stop watching my videos? Can you guys please stop talking about me? Can you guys please I stop listening about this to for a long time, my mom. music? I deserve to be a stripper. My mom don't deserve to live in a crib. My child don't deserve to have a good life. I don't deserve no money. I deserve to be in the Bronx. In, um... 450 Woody Crest, apartment three, some shit I forgot. Exactly. There y'all go. Yeah, I got it. I said it out my mouth. I hope this made y'all niggas that talk shit about me richer. I hope this shit y'all blow it up. I hope this make y'all happy. I'm just trying to make everybody know come like to this even one. my haters. They go. But sometimes this backfired on her in a major way. As soon, one of her many Instagram rants taking aim at her haters and discussing her hardships led her to make an admission that has haunted her career ever since. Oh, the drug oh, 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 to them, there was a clear double standard at work because if a man had said anything like that, they would be outcasted from the industry. But Cardi was allowed to carry on her career like nothing happened. Love Everyone completely forgot about this and there's still people out there that support, listen, and stand her. You want a powerful female artist? There are many more out there to look up to that have done fantastic progress with the industry rather than someone- And the craziest part about it is it's not like she even talked about it in a way where she felt guilt about it or remorse or was like, yeah, I was a horrible person. She's like, no, that's what I did to survive. Like nobody handed anything to me. I had to, I had to grind. I had to work for that. <laughs> like I put in work to drug those niggas and rob them. I did that. What? As terrible. Insane. As but you want people to be faithful to you. You think you deserve loyalty? Like it, I'm not confused. I'm why she's going through what she's going through. Like, this is wild. In fact, not only was her career able to carry on as normal, but she was about to become one of the biggest stars in the game, whether people supported her or not. Just a couple of years back, the concept of the girl from Love and Hip Hop's New York releasing a record would have been laughed at. 
But when Invasion of Privacy dropped on April 6, 2018, it immediately debuted at the top of the charts. Before long, it set a new Apple Music record for the most streamed album by a female artist in a single week with over 100 million streams. With singles like I Like It and Money, Cardi had a hit on her hands, and the album would stay on the Billboard charts for over 200 weeks. But even with all it's those good. accolades, no one would have imagined that a record like that would win a Grammy for Best Rap Album. But that's exactly what happened. With the project that had at least three writers on any given track, beating albums from people like Travis Scott and Pusha T, mm -hmm. as well as the late Super Nipsey Hussle that. and Mac Miller. When the news was announced, a lot of people were heated, including Mac Miller's ex-girlfriend Ariana Grande. Oh. In a deleted tweet, oh. she labeled the decision literal bullshit. Oh. For Cardi, oh, this was a culmination of everything she'd worked for. But since then, it seems like she's really taken her foot off the gas and been unable to really follow the project up ever since. Instead, most of the time you hear about her is for drama in her personal life or because of another issue with a high-profile peer. As I'm sure you know by now, Cardi and Nicki Minaj have been involved in a messy beef for years, which we've covered on this channel before. But even when all of that was going down, the Bronx MC consistently said she was all for women's empowerment in hip hop. I really hate when people pit me against each other because it just makes me feel like I gotta move like them. Cardi said to XXL when asked about how the culture manufactures conflicts between women in the game. And I don't like moving like nobody else. Even last year, everybody was putting music out. All the females, Nicki Minaj, Doja Cat, Megan Thee Stallion, and people were saying, oh, Cardi is over, Cardi's over. Everything that I accomplished, people were trying to erase it because new females were out. But there were plenty of rap fans who felt that Cardi's presence in the game was counterproductive to women getting the respect they deserved. Because ever since she came out, Cardi has never moved past the sexualization that populates the mainstream of the culture. And on tracks like the smash single WAP with Megan Thee Stallion, yeah. she even caused major cultural debates about the potential effect on today's youth. Ultimately, a lot of this was overblown, and the lyrics were no different than what you've heard from Lil' Kim or Foxy Brown in the 90s. However, Bobby what even rap fans did take issue Kim. with is that there no. was a little hypocrisy about it. Shortly after the massive success of WAP, Cardi was celebrating the track on IG when Culture, her firstborn daughter with Migos' Offset, walked into the room. Straight away, she scrambled to turn the track off before she could hear a word. Yeah, I in that moment, it looked like Cardi knew that the messages in the music were potentially damaging and social media users were quick to call her out on the double standard. So your daughter can't listen to it, but everybody else's daughter can? Disgusting. After coming under fire for so many of her raps being sexually charged, Cardi did what she always does. Acknowledge that's where the bag is, and therefore, her focus is at. First of all, I rap about my pussy because she's my best friend, you know what I'm saying? And second of all, it's because it seems like that's what people want to hear. I ain't even gonna front, because let me tell you something. When I did be careful, people was talking mad shit in the beginning. Like, what the fuck is this? This is not what that's I expected. Right. I expected this, I expected that. So it's like... If that's that's something really well. I don't say it went to number one because I don't know for sure, but pretty sure I was pretty sure that was one of her biggest songs. Then all right, then I'm gonna start rapping so about my count. pussy again. But while this was the case for a long time, Cardi is now facing the worst numbers of her entire career. As now, even her fans are beginning to lose patience with her. At the moment, it's been over six years since Cardi B released Invasion of Privacy. From time to time, she teased a new project only for it to never materialize. All the while, the singles she's been releasing have been subject to diminishing returns, and chart positions have been in freefall since up hit number one. Even working with Kanye West and Lil Durk couldn't get her back into the top 10 in 2022. In the meantime, Cardi has been taking on acting roles, releasing makeup lines, and even launching a non-explicit OnlyFans account, which reportedly made her over $45 million in one year. In other words, she's basically delivering anything other than her long-awaited music that her fans crave. And once again, she suggested that it was everyone's fault but her. Throughout this whole time, people was making rumors like, oh, she's having problems with her label. Her label is, is shelving her. Uh, her label is tired of her. They're getting more female talent. And it's like, no, they never tired of you. Okay, that's one thing. <laughs> and labels, they don't give a fuck. They want you to put music out. Like, that's what they love. They want, they want you to put music out all the time. For a while, she was going as long as nine months without giving fans anything. 
and according to her, it's because she wouldn't release music unless she felt like it was perfect. Just being an artist, it, it will go two years without putting a fucking song out. And they don't be like, oh, you're irrelevant, it's over for yes, you. Yes, they do. Me, I didn't put out songs for nine months, and it's like, oh, she's irrelevant, she's over, she's a flop, we told you that. And I'm like, yo, hey, hey, that's, that type of shit started get to me like crush me but it's like me. i'm not gonna let that shit get to me to the point yes, that i'm gonna put out a song that i'm not really in love with but as the release of her september 2023 single bongos showed cardi may have lost the ability to know what's a hit and what isn't her second team up with Megan this time. I did like Bongo. Cardi they looked to replicate the success. But initially, I was like, ass. considering how worried she looked before it was released, she seemed to know it could be a make or break. I am so nervous. I feel like I want to like throw up or something because it's like safe is coming out. I I feel really good. I feel really confident. But like, I'm just so nervous because it's like, you uh, know that I'm always nervous. You know that for no reason. I know no reason. I've seen you guys complain for months and months and months. Not gonna lie to y'all, like you guys been hurting my feelings, but I understand that you guys been frustrated with me. So I wanted to make sure that I do this right for you guys and I hope you guys enjoy it. As it turns out, she had plenty of grounds for concern as fans just weren't eating it up like the way they did with WAP back in the day. The subject matter is tired. The over-sexualization is old. I listened to the song once, but I won't listen to it again. It's just more of the same with this new single. Cardi needs to expand her artistry and explore new topics if she's going to have lasting power in the industry. Rapping about sex and how good she looks every time is just not gonna cut it. Peaking at number 52 on the Spotify charts, fans just weren't moved by it at all. And neither were longtime Cardi supporters like Joe Budden. Remember I said all oh, the top, 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 top artists make songs like a science project, like AI made it? That's yeah. what this sounds like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This beat is undeniable because it's already worked. This is a beat that has worked. So we're going to put two of our biggest women rappers in the world on it, talking their normal shit. Mm -hmm. But I don't think this song is going to work at all. I hate this song. I don't think this song's going to work. In recent months, Joe Budden has been a vocal critic of Cardi, arguing that the real problem is that she just doesn't want to release an album. Cardi B is afraid, and I'm tired of just nobody saying it. Cardi B is scared to come out. It don't take this long to come out. They recently just found every year where she plugged that she was coming, dating back to 2019. It's like six different slides in different years of you saying, hey, I have something coming. Even this freestyle was previewed a year ago. But as people like Joe have been giving their viewpoints on where she's at career-wise, Cardi, maybe sensing that her lucrative career might be in danger, just keeps lashing out with rants like this one she delivered after the release of her song, Enough. So I'm always working and I'm hungry. I'm, I'm working like it's not even 2017. Fuck 2017. I'm working like I'm in 2016 and I have something to prove. Y'all niggas is mad at that. This shit ain't luck, nigga. This is work, nigga. I don't got a patience to be on nothing. I'd rather chart low just so I can know what my fans like or not, what they're going to react or not. But fortunately, I charted high. Cause this one motherfuckers wanna hear bitches be talking mouth be bigger than they pockets. I'm pretty, I'm lily, I'm running this city, I'm shitting on bitches in every department. There's niggas that haven't been like my they haven't even been liking my records for a whole year. Even Joe Button don't even that's the hip to me. Even him said that this song was fire. Even him, why would he lie to me? Why would Joe Button lie to me? He don't even fucking like me. He didn't like my last record. How are people that don't even fucking like me saying that this record is fire? And she's gone and that's crazy how these delusional artists they confuse you giving your honest opinion and giving criticism with you not liking them what where, where is he where is where did you get that <laughs> he just said he don't like the fucking song if he don't like it he don't like it so oh he hates me but even he Increasingly unsure of herself, Cardi has continued it's to take hip hop's opinion touch. of her by lashing out at the female rappers she once claimed she wanted to empower. During her ongoing I love this song. Via, she even claimed that she would sue her over a diss track I don't think it was enough. that it was she a... had cheated on Offset, which was, was maybe the least hip hop thing you could possibly do. Very nasty. It started very nasty, very aggressive. I was coming at her and she was coming at me. And then I called her back because I'm so appalled at the fact that she thinks that I'm copying her or that I'm stealing from her. Cause there's nothing that she do that I that I like. I don't like her music. I don't like her style. I don't like how she look. Like I don't what? Like nothing about her. I don't even see the bitch. Until I'm talking like, like she's the queen of rap. Is that the point where fans have really had enough? 
because while she may be a household name, she's ultimately not contributed enough to the music world to be held in any high esteem. I know one album in six years ain't talking. Oh. Now she's moved onto Ice Spice after several subs apparently surfaced on her album Y2K. Once again, she started talking like Nicki once did when Cardi was on the come up. These bitches have absolutely lost their mind. Oh, I'm getting all my lickbacks on my album though. On each one of you bitches. These bitches can't <laughs> see me in numbers or status. Cardi each continued. One of you bitches. Y'all had way too much time to catch up. Can't see me in money, can't see me in real estate, fashion, and can't see me in person either. I'm not in a rat race with none of you bitches. And I'm a show y'all. Show us, I know, girl. her fans and critics have heard it all before yeah, in terms of promises tired. of new music. Instead, Cardi keeps focusing on old glories, and as a result, each rant like this is met with absolutely savage responses. Your album that's never coming out, you can't even get your man back. Ooh. At this point, it pretty much seems like Cardi is backed into a corner. The audience wants an album, but when she does release a track, it's not met with the same response because she's refused to evolve. And when she does go back to the hypersexual angle, I like as she did too. with her new feature for <laughs> Walmart, Interestingly enough, I didn't like this song at first either. I first reacted to it, I'm like, oh, this is not giving this ratchet ass, like, hit ass song. I don't want to hear this. Play it in the gym. I'm like, fuck me all that money. <laughs> Uh, I like it. I really like her verse too. It's very sexual though, and it is tired. Like I understand what they're saying. The same content over and over again. It does get tired. It gets boring. But you know, it's like after a while, I'm like, fuck it. You can't beat them. Join them. You know, this is so much of the. This is a lot of the content that gets pushed out there. So you know, I'll listen to some initially and be like, mm, I ain't really fucking with it. But then I'm like, I need music for the gym. And I don't want to hear no deep, conscious music in the gym. Like, bro, I want to hear some upbeat, like, ratchet music. So, it just gets the job done. But it is the same, same old shit. Wash and repeat. Past. Zero talent, just nudity, Ooh. and gibberish. Ooh, but gibberish. instead of acknowledging that it's up for her to make a change, <laughs> she's routinely aimed at her own supporters, labeling them as pussies and even yeah, fashion. Yeah, it's misdirected Hollering anger. because you feel hit? Mm. No, it's just annoying. This means a lot to me, and it's always a complaint and crying with this pussy ass fan base. See, That's the problem is that you want to create a cult, that. and I'm just too real for exactly. that. Exactly. No, the problem is that you was even complaining when I was dropping music as well. Always got some shit to say with your three neck roll. What? Oh, no. <laughs> it seems like Cardi what? is a spiral that she just can't get. No, I felt them though. They were so real for that comment. Like, you want a cult, you want people to follow you blindly and like every single thing you put out. Of course people gonna complain when they don't like it. They don't fucking like it. How you gonna get mad because people don't like it? If they don't like it, they don't like it. Probably and rather than focus on got her blessings, <laughs> it's gone to the point that she can't even accept an award which crowned her as an inspiration without going off on everyone. Yeah, I'm really my biggest critic. And I always say this. Nobody have it harder in the industry and in every genre harder than a female rapper. And I'm gonna tell you why. You're the main one because complaining all the time. You gotta have the best verses. And not only that, you gotta kill the charts. And then on top of that, your personal life gotta be perfect. That's well, then good. the odd bitches is gonna use that against you. Oh, <laughs> uh, your husband, your husband, shut up. <laughs> I make more money than all the niggas who fuck you. This is a good ass bitch. She's embarrassing. And this the award. It's hard to be yourself. This is who y'all give me award to? to. It's hard to want to impress yourself in the music school? because sometimes I don't like showing weakness in my music because it's like you can't see the pussy in me, bitch. Now she's giving reasons for even those oh, who didn't respect her and her contributions so to hip hop to start to distance themselves from her. Facing sky high expectations for her next album and no accountability for the many, many ways in which she soured hip hop's audience's opinion of her, Cardi has a real uphill battle if she ever wants to reclaim a career that a lot of people already think has lasted way longer than it should have. The question is whether she even wants it badly enough or if she's ever made the money she's craved and can't rekindle the passion that made her into a superstar in the first place. In a lot of ways, what Cardi B is currently facing at the moment is in keeping the state of female rap generally as it begins to decline. However, if you want to learn about the decline of female rap as a whole- I reacted to that. Um, yes, girl. <laughs> girl, she is so annoying, bro. I do like some of her music, but just the way that she comes across, it's just 
tiring. It's draining. She's always complaining, always worried about all of the negativity. That's all she focuses on. I'm sure she gets a lot of love as well, a lot, because she's such a massive artist, and, and she's still successful. She may not be as successful as she was in the past, but she still is a, a very successful, like, A-list artist. So in order to remain you know, at that status, you have to have a lot of supporters and a lot of people who still fuck with you. So there are people who are showing her love, but she don't care about that. She only wants to focus on the ne negativity and, and constantly go off on people and curse on her fans and say she wish that they die and their mama die. And like, she's just such a disgusting person. That's how she comes across. So, you know, I understand people not really wanting to fuck with her like that. So over time, she's fucking up her, her own sales and shit, her future sales. Like, she's not proven herself to be a very likable person. The problem is the music isn't that great to compensate with you being a terrible person. That's the problem. Because, you know, there are other artists that people don't like. People don't like Doja Cat. You know, they, they don't like her as a person at all. But her music is, is great. <laughs> you know, so they're they're willing to, like, excuse that. Like, all right, we still going to pop to her music anyway. Um, but Cardi does not have that privilege. And even with Doja, even though she, her music is really good, her her public you know persona has turned a lot of people off and some people don't support her because of that so these artists need to understand that you know that's going to make your sales take a hit when you're being this just horrible of a person and you're being this nasty so she's like I'm in my, my villain era I'm embracing that okay embrace these little sales too and you're going to be crying about that like she's just annoying bro <laughs> but i do fuck with her music so i'll put all that to the side cuz i don't i don't know her i don't have to deal with her so i really don't give a fuck at the end of the day um i'm still you know listen to her album when it comes out and still you know uh like her music the the ones that i do enjoy but yeah she's just uh, so i see why people don't respect her in hip hop specifically as well y'all let me know what y'all think let me know what other videos you want to watch and i'll see y'all next time bye